Ladies and gentlemen, it is the final concluding piece to the daily that we're doing right now. Fun day Monday, daily number 423. We are looking at all things burrowed banelings. We saw some amazing baneling bursts and some epic high-level play from Jack Attack. We saw a sweet-ass play from Lua that resulted in an immediate loss. And now we're going to look at another game where a Zerg player is trying to satisfy the Fun Day Monday topic. And though he barely does so, it's not the Fun Day Monday topic that is the joy of this game. It is the game itself. Let's go ahead and hop into it. The enemy, JQ is dead. And I am so excited to let you know that our hero is none other than Scar Wolf. Scar Wolf. Yes, what a great name. I love that Scar Wolf. It's so like 80% tough. You know, like my name is Doom Neck. I'm Flex Thors. You know, it's like awesome it's so good this is it reminds me of that wolf sweater the one that totally gets you laid you guys know what i'm talking about just google wolf sweater it'll show up that sweater is gnarly we got scar wolf who i sincerely hope is an actual wolf spawning in the top right position scar wolf Amazing, and I know a lot of you have the theme music to Star Wolf stuck in your head. And to that I say, good luck, have fun with what I've done to you. Now, JQ is dead, is building a barracks at the north side of the map, following it up with an aggressive double gas. This will leave him a grand total of seven units mining minerals. In the income tab, we see he has almost more minerals mine than gas but only by a little bit in the meantime we see scar wolf the toughest nerd that ever lived hanging out in the top side now it looks like jq is dead always oh, following it up with a reactored hellion excellent this will allow him to be there in a heartbeat Awesome. Excellent. This is the exact opposite of the date problem I described in part number one, where rather than not having a car at all, you have a car already there when you call her on the phone. Hey, do you want to go do something? Yeah, sure. Can you pick me up? Yeah. Come downstairs. I'm there. Are you, are you ready? Do you need five minutes? I have a great song on. It's Rihanna, and her music is still good. I don't care what you say. I love it when she comes on the radio. I can just listen while I wait. Not a big deal. Looks like JQ is dead pulling the suave, convenient gentleman. Well, I don't know. I like to just be there when I call in case she does want to go because I don't want to inconvenience her with a 15-minute drive. No problem. JQ is dead. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of Civilization 2 style uh, play up in the top side. I may as well begin building my city up here and then I'll join my empire with roads. Let me just take another four hours for this one turn so that way I can analyze every possible. Whoa, Scar Wolf with six cents. Perhaps he used his special wolf scent to identify what's going on into the top left side and now it looks like jq is dead putting the pressure on scar wolf oh my god we'll be a scarred wolf indeed these aren't regular hellions they shoot hellfire according to the lore rolling rapidly in the head of scar wolf and it looks like oh no another pair of hellions did manage to sneak their way up to the top side but scar wolf an experienced veteran of hellion runbys will be able to deal with this in time but it looks like JQ is dead, is not done with that one SCV. He has built a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, and now a six structure. He's going Hellion Marine, no defense. But there's the bunker now finally finishing at the front of JQ is dead. Scarwolf, he's so tough. God, continuing to wall himself in, excellent. Looking good. Now it looks like JQ is dead is gonna go ahead and follow up his Marine Hellion by going pretty much Marine and uh, okay, all right, okay, okay, to each his own, you know, if that's what sets his sail, that's fine, that's great, if that's what floats his boat, if that's what 
powers his Toyota and go ahead and fill her up to the brim with base up in the top left. I wouldn't want her to crash on the highway. Looks like Scar will, oh no, having very scarred Queen. So scarred to the point they're dead lying outside the front and tattered little Queenie remains, but that's fine. This defensive cancel-worthy hatchery at the front is getting geared up and ready to evaporate. Scarwolf now starting to build some banelings. He doesn't want to build too many because he still needs to get burrow. He still needs to get any amount of gas that will allow him to sustain himself. But he has to be careful because there is a tank push next door starting and a base as well as, well as every production structure. Oh no! JQ is dead Is just now defended his main base. Excellent! Looks like he is gearing up to do, oh no, blue flame hellions. But in the meantime, Scarwolf starting to move forward. And this is the part that becomes precious. Alright, here we go, guys. He gets stopped. And look at this. Okay, here it comes. Scarwolf. Do you know what the title of this replay was? Do you know? Do you know what it was? It was called... My first Baneling bust. Oh, oh, Scarwolf. Oh, 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 he's he's probably playing this game with training wheels and water wings. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my God, Scarwolf took his crayons in his fists and circled the front and said. I think it's time to Baneling bust. Oh my god. Here he comes. Here he comes. Where is he? Where are you, Scarwolf? Are you back in your main base? Oh, he's vomiting larva. Okay, that's fine. Okay, where... Oh, jeez. Holy shit. Holy... Oh, this is gonna be a problem. Oh my god, he's getting scanned. Oh, no. Okay, well, he's gonna try to keep... Oh, oh, here it comes. Oh, ah, ah, the queen. Retweet the queen. Re, 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 retweet the queen quickly. Go to the queen of England's Twitter and just retweet whatever she's talking about. That's what I meant to say. What useful does she have to say? Still the queen. Oh, oh, watch Funday Monday because I'm the queen of England. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys like my Queen of England voice? It's pretty good, right? Oh, I'll just be building Blue Flame Hellions. Oh, oh. Excellent. And here he comes. Here he comes. Retreat the Queen. Oh, it happened without him. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry. You'll get another chance next time. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, those banelings wanted to cuddle the wall. Doesn't that sound familiar, fellas? Forever alone. <laughs> Forever alone. <gasps> oh, well, if at first you don't succeed, then just buy yourself some more money. Oh, oh a baneling burst at the front. Moving all the way in. And Scarwolf. Advancing his way forward. Oh, oh, it was quite decadent, the explosions in his base. Meanwhile, Scarwolf is about to lose the game. All right, great. Scarwolf, cool. Scarwolf hanging out. Scarwolf getting his burrow up. Scarwolf is the man. Cuddle time, Scarwolf. We can't Baneling bust anymore, but that's okay because we're getting more queens. We have the defense up. Here it comes. Scarwolf needs to spawn more overlords. It looks like JQ is dead is going to be under a little bit of fire from spine crawlers from the high ground. Here comes Scarwolf. Come on, Scarwolf. Scarwolf, I believe. Hang in there. Aspire! Do it for the queen, Scarwolf. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the Queen of England will be very shocked when she gets a whole bunch of tweets from StarCraft players commending her play, her general aggression, and of course delightful transitions throughout time. Scarwolf, the Queen! Oh, she's dead! But that's okay, it's a full-on Baneling drone assault. Uh, um, ooh, uh, that worked about as well as it did at Enemy at the Gates. 
Um, and I hate to tell you, but we too have about another two hours <laughs> in this game. Here we go. JQ is dead. Advancing forward, it looks like JQ is dead at two, like a 1.8 basing Terran right now against the uh, soon to be one basing Zerg. But it's okay. Scarwolf knows that the point of Funday Monday is to actually do the Funday Monday. He's going to sack the expo. He's going to make a great decision. Oh, not Burrow Banelings, but 1A Banelings. And now JQ is dead is doing the classic maneuver of never retreating ever no matter what. I got a pair of Marines and three tanks. I have a Brady Bunch of units starting to move forward, but let me tell you an important fact about the Brady Bunch. It was eventually cancelled. Because all the Brady members were put down. Isn't that a horrible story? I was horrified the first time I heard that. It's true. They just they just lined them up. And um, it was painless, though. They just fell asleep. They just got cold. But that's okay. Scarwolf, he's hanging out. He's going to attack the base that's by his base. He has to utilize the power of Micro. And it looks like he will be able to Harris a little bit. Ooh! He swept right on in. He has tanks at the front. But these tanks ain't no friend of mine. Key words from Scarwolf. There's the scan picking off that essential critically placed spine crawler at the front. JQ is dead. I don't know what was going through his JQ is head. But he certainly is full of regret at this point in time. The re-expand right next to the other base of JQ is dead. In the main, we see a substantial amount of wing banelings. The mute account is continuing to rise. We have yet to see any ability for Scar Wolf to satisfy the Funday Monday constraint. Come on. Come on. Oh, banelings! Banelings, 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 banelings. Ooh, banelings. Banelings, banelings. No banelings, banelings. JQ is dead. Did lose this base, but does have the ability to retreat. Now, though everything is almost certainly going to die, I just want to note how much this looks and reminds you of Battlestar Galactica. Anyone? Is there anyone there? Please. Anybody. Excellent. There he is. Pulling back. There we go. Landing a very deadly positioning. Now he's just going to go ahead and expand and expand. And trying to pick it off. Excellent. Now it looks like we have a substantial amount of Banelings coming in from Scarwolf. Looks like Scarwolf is continuing to add on as many Zerglings as he can. Scarwolf, you still need to satisfy the Funday Monday constraint. There he is. He's burrowing. He's burrowing. He's burrowing. <gasps> <gasps> I hope you brought a book. I finished the whole book. It's a quick read. It's 82 pages. Boom! Excellent. In the meantime, we see the mutilus from Scarwolf. Sigh! A sigh. Now, I want you to just know that that was not JQ is dead going, ugh. Everything's gay, right? He wasn't doing that. He instead was giving his last dying breath. Because Scarwolf got him. Bam! Without any further ado, I'd like to demonstrate my favorite game in all of the Funday Monday submissions. Let us divine. It is... <gasps> Perfect. No, that's the wrong game. Where is it? Where is it? 
Perfect. Tugi versus Warrack. Excellent. Excellent. Final game coming up, ladies and gents. Final game. Tugi. Tugi, Tugi, Tugi. Spawning in the left position is the red Protoss pieces. In the right position, we have our hero, Warrack. I don't know what a Warrack is. But he's awesome. He's the man. Not quite as much the man as Scarwolf is the man, who is my seriously new favorite all-time hero of all time, who played through that game, hit that detonation and said, uh, nailed it, submitted to Day9 TV, and you know what? He got upvoted. He got landed in the show. Oh! War rack. Did you just lay the war smack down? Come here. Here it comes. 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 And we'll bam. Oh my god. That was a dronely team effort. Looks like war rack now. Taking his bases. Tugi. Or Tugi or Tushi or whatever his name is. He's going to go ahead and expand. He just flinched the probe, built a cannon, and war rack. Might be doing a little bit of war attack coming up. Aw, oh, yeah, the war rack. <laughs> it's a rack made for war and destruction. Yeah, there's the probe wandering around. I have a lot of admiration for war rack because when someone says that they're going to do the fun day Monday and then they just sort of incorporate it in, that's one thing. But when you rush for it, that's what really excites, delights, and entices me. Warrack is building himself the Baneling Nest at his own Baneling behest. There's the burrow now going down. And with this Baneling Nest finished up, we're starting to realize that Warrack may <laughs> need some extra gas. Lulzy, lulzy, lulzy. Oh. Burrow coming up. Meanwhile, in Tugi's base, it looks like he's going for a pretty standard four gate after the expand thing. He's also going to be getting a Twilight Council just to go for some sort of Blink Stalker plus um, Force Field Sentry style play. And now it looks like Warrack. Does he have any Banelings on the field yet? He doesn't. He hasn't yet experienced that joy. In the meantime, Warrack's head crab looking Baneling Nest is just going to be twitching away ever so eager to attach itself to a mate. What? Warrack now moving forward with all of his spine crawlers, just getting himself in a good position. Has a nice spread of overlords if we come to the Warrack cam. But where will he plant that burrow? Where does he plant that burrow? There it goes. There it goes. Aw, oh, yeah, and he's. He has a lot of Zerglings there. We haven't seen the move out yet from Kyugi. We haven't yet seen it. Is he gonna make any more? I'm whispering because I can't remember what he does at this point. What is he doing? Oh, there it is. And here it is. Look at this, a fish. The David Attenborough style commentary. God, David Attenborough is the man. We're all going to go ahead and check out this expansion. He's getting his third up. He's getting the 1-1 one, one purely for Dem Bane lengths. Oh, come on, Warwreck. Come on, I believe. I believe. We have a substantial force of Stalkers with Blink and Sentries with Force Field. We haven't seen Protoss make a Colossus yet because of the fact that he is not yet engaged in imbalanced behavior. And now it looks like the scout from Warrack is down. The rocks will soon be down as well. There is a, what, there's some sort of burrowed, a burrowed Zergling for scouting purposes. <laughs> oh no, oh. Oh, have patience, I believe. And, oh! See you later, Stalker. Uh, uh, oh, shit. He still has a big army. All right. All right. What do we have? We have Overlords. Okay. What do we have? Um, we have some Zerglings. Um, okay. Well, we're almost done with 1 1. We, his rocks are down. Excellent. Effective. Okay. Um, Tugi. Tucci Dushi. Moving forward. Taking out the destructible debris. It looks like we're pulling back War Rack. How are you going to defend this one? It looks like his answer. Oh, look at that very nice pick on the third, trying to get that little bit of creep vomiting on there. Oh, picking off the pylon. How expert and liquid ret like of you. But the problem is he's sacrificing his own third. War rack. Kind of, I would honestly say doing a little bit of war slack. Ing. Now collecting his Zerglings together into two forces, getting ready to do the assault, but the force field is honestly Gosu times two. 
thereby negating any effectiveness of this particular push. Warrack's starting to gear up. He's starting, he's gearing up. More Banelings. Who'd have thought on a Baneling base daily? And now he's starting to move forward. Oh, a poke! And a poke! And a poke. Oh, very nice blink micro by Tugi. And it looks like the Zerglings are continuing to pull back from the backside. We have a lot of Banelings. Will he just attack with them? No! He'll burrow! Right in front of his opponent's face! Oh my god, have you ever seen a more come at me bro moment in your entire life? Uh, just... We're just hanging out, just come right on in, it's warm! The water is so nice, it's like in those Disney movies where there's that contrived manipulation scene where there's like a woman dressed up in a sort of provocative, seductive outfit but she has like horns and her teeth are black because she's a devil but somehow we as the viewer are supposed to believe that the protagonist might fall for it. Come in the water, it's so warm! Why are you inviting him into a hot tub in the middle of a grocery store? No one would buy that but of course the protagonist in the Disney movie is like well I did already get my celery and the pastries that I needed for dinner tonight perhaps a, a bath would be good to open up my pores before cooking no of course not he never falls for that and Tugi never falls for that war rack there it is looks like Tugi is gathering up some zealots to uh, I hope it's not to attack I'm I'm crossing my fingers in hope that in terms of, uh, I guess I would say, m one of those memory games, right? You know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever, I don't know, let's just say, licked a battery. You ever licked a battery? You ever licked a battery, like touched a battery to your tongue? This is a battery, by the way. I'm, I'm, ho I'm holding a battery. If you ever, like, touched a battery to your tongue, you know what happens? It, it zaps you. It'll zap to you. Right, and you know what you don't do five minutes later? You generally don't lick the battery. Um, but Tugi, I just want to—I just want to forewarn you about batteries. I just want to suggest. Oh no! Just don't lick the battery. Don't, don't lick the battery. Don't lick the battery. Put your tongue away, Tugi. Don't lick the. Oh, oh God! Oh, he came at him, bro. And look, the reburrow, the reburrow, well, I have a warp of prison, which will allow me to, uh, reinforcements, oh, baneling, 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 war rack, war rack, give him the war smack, see ya later, Tugi. God. <laughs> Put down that battery. Put it down. Stop touching your tongue to it, you're not gonna win a medal. Oh, even though you're tasting it right now. Tugi's gonna go ahead and chrono boost. He's gonna try to do what we call round two fight. Rebel two, action! Looks like Warrack is gonna go ahead and take his third base, and we're gonna see Tugi build the counter to Banelings, which is, of course, the Zealot. The important thing is to get the Zealot speed so that way the Zealots can sprint to the bomb and try to deal melee damage to it. It's important that he just gets it over with. <laughs> there it is. It looks like we see Warrack uh, trying to do a little bit of uh, damage to the Overlord. He succeeds. We see an Overlord party up here on the high ground. Now Warrack has some important decisions to make at this point in time. Decisions like <laughs> Never mind, Warrack. Here's my money invested in the stock market. I don't care if you're just some guy who plays StarCraft. When it comes to decision making, you sure know how to pull a profit in my heart. You do see that one Zergling is uh, very nicely planted at the front of that base. Looks like Warrack starting to move forward. Oh, he's gonna drop the workers! No. Okay, oh, he's gonna drop the, no! Oh, he had too many speed zealots and they counter banelings too hard. Rats. Rats. But in the meantime, we have an over over the drop from Warrack coming in. Warrack continuing to build only banelings. He has his third up, kinda. Starting to establish some control. Do it, Warrack. Do it. I'll even have this thing open for you. I trust you. Okay, three beforehand. 
successfully killed off an extra space in my heart for you, Warrack. Here he comes. Now, in the meantime, it looks like our Zerg friend is building more Banelings. He's getting the Adrenal Gland upgrade, which is weird. I mean, you should never get that upgrade. That upgrade sucks. It doesn't help Banelings. We'll detonate 20% faster. Thanks, Blizzard. Here he comes. Here co oh, yeah. oh, yes. I do believe... Oh, God. Really nice timing by Tugi pulling back. No! Terrible timing by Tugi! Oh, what are you doing, Tugi? No! Oh, God, Tugi! Oh, Tugi. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let us tell a story through metaphor. Oh, my God. What? Did you bring a battery in your purse? No, I remember what happens. Give me that battery. Give me, hand me that battery. Wait a minute. I remember... Uh, oh... Oh my god, did I just lick metal? Or is that the aftertaste of a Diet Coke? No, you licked a battery. <laughs> Don't worry, you just licked a battery, man. Looks like 2 starting to move out. Now, the thing to note is that in this army supply tab, it is overwhelmingly red. In fact, it's like... Uh... 40% more red. Nailed it. Looks like he's starting to step forward. 40%. No, it's not. It's, um... Uh, it's like 80... It's like about 85% more red. Good. Good. Great. Now, these, uh, the army tab is bigger. His army tab is a little bit larger. The Overlord Party is still going down up in the top left. A B-Y-O-O. -O. <laughs> bring your own Overlord Party in... <laughs> In the middle, it looks like Warrack is getting ready for this direct frontal assault. Ah, oh, shit! He's going to the left. Oh, I wasn't expecting a left or an assault. And there he is moving up to the front. And it looks like a couple Zergans from Warrack heading towards the middle. But I think Warrack is well aware of where the army is. In his natural expansion, mind out. In his main, virtually mind out. But meanwhile, Warwick is repositioning. He's repositioning. He's building more Banelings. And Tugi still has a big army supply lead. But the counterattack at the third from Warwick. Ooh, it gets trapped. It gets trapped. And in the meantime, it looks like the attack is going beautifully down south. Burrow. And he burrows. He burrows. Oh, do not come at him, bro, whatever you do. Bro, if there's one thing you shouldn't come at, it's him, bro. <laughs> War smacked. And in the meantime, the third base is down and dead and good, as it should be. Excelente. But a lone stalker remains to tell the story. And this is one of the starting character archetypes of the Mass Effect series. Right? Soul Survivor. Soul Survivor hanging out in the top side. A little counterattack. Those zealots do directly counter Banelings, but pff, boy, there's a Baneling, am I right, fellas? Soul Survivor. About to begin the first mission. <laughs> Saren, Saren, Saren. I'm gonna go, I just wanted to state that tomorrow's Newbie Tuesday will be all about the notion of adjustment. It will be about you taking one big aspect of uh, one of your games and identifying one major thing that went wrong. Think through it really, really thoroughly. Make sure there's not a lot of mistakes going on. Don't do one of those impulse adjustments where you're just like, I lost a Banelings, I better make tanks. I want it to be a solid, cool, clean, clear adjustment addressing all the economy before and after and how your control went. Send me the game before the adjustment and the game after the adjustment. Submit those games to me to Tuesday at day9.tv and include your name, race, rank, um, and what the adjustment was and what you saw. Please include your name because I can't just figure out who you are. <laughs> and see you next week for more Fun Day Monday with Day 9.
Monday, Monday, with day nine.